I told Matt that if I 5 0 this league, I'm going to play this deck on Saturday. That's a good start to 5 0 in. Opponent F6 their turn. God bless. God bless. Or mulliganed and didn't get missed their land. Send a message, chat. Send a message. There's no reason to make people listen to me chew. That doesn't sound pleasant. Back for three months, back to cord. Thank you, Lost Way, for the Twitch Prime support. There's a lot of great people making a lot of great stuff on Twitch. Thanks for supporting my stuff for three months in a row. Alrighty. Mom and Pop Thopter Shop getting set up here. There is a Team 5K in Chicago this weekend. That's standard modern legacy. Team 5K in Chicago. The candy man can cause he mixes it with love and makes the world taste good. Mm. Uh, we get to put the selfless spirit into play to protect the candy man. Mm, mm, mm. Oh baby, oh baby. Just guy control. Ain't that a bag of dicks? Mmm. Mmm. Trigger. Trigger. How you doing? You had the path and didn't upkeep path me? Loose. Loose. You let the candy man feed. You let the candy man feed, opponent. Why would you let him feed so much? He's hungry and he's coming for you. Well, I hope you don't 5-0 then. <laughs> Tireless Tracker drew us a land and four cards, right? And guess what? There's still two more trackers in my deck. You are more delicious than this sugar-infested Pop-Tart I am eating. Mmm. 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 All right, let's start by attacking for four here. Cast the counterspell bait. You could you could argue that I'm a master at baiting. Just bait our opponent with this this year. This year voice of resurgence. What makes me want to take Kiki Cord to Vegas and lose beautifully? They could be setting up a supreme verdict here next turn. That being said, the Candyman's going to draw more cards, so we're going to play him out into a potential Supreme Verdict. I assume they're bolting Selfless Spirit here. Yeah. I think even if we get Wrath, like, Ravine plus, like, the cards we're going to draw is just, like, well worth it. Rage and Cajun here. Firing on up. Yeah, we actually just have Lethal if they, if they tap out to Wrath us, right? Because we have, like, Ravine plus Reach. Yeah, yeah, so Wrath's not even good enough here. 
Let me tell you about my tireless track. There should pro. Let's talk about mistakes that were made during deck building. Why aren't there four trackers in my deck, chat? Did I, what, what was I on that there aren't four trackers in my deck? Oh, immediate regret, game, game one regrets. Why aren't there four trackers in my deck? I don't know about that, chat. It might be better than like my Courser. We had to fit in uncastable goblins. I did have to fit, I did fit in a Courser. Maybe the one Courser is worse than the fourth tracker. Drop league restart. I guess I could have, I guess I could have avoided that by cracking a clue aggressively. Yeah, the next, the next stream, the next league's gonna have four trackers in it for sure. We're playing Jund with four trackers. All anemic green decks, they, they, they gotta leverage their one strength, right? All right, well, you're dead. You're dead. Actually, this is key. Um, I'm gonna path their guy as opposed to showing them lightning helix because I don't want them to play around reach in the subsequent games. I don't. I don't want them to play around me having reach in my deck. It is a donation for my Jun deck. Someone sent in a donation and said, "Hey, build Jund with four tireless trackers like you wanted to." So that's what I did. All right, so pretty clean living here. We get to board out eight Magic the Gathering cards. We get to board in eight Magic the Gathering cards. Look at that, look at that. The, I didn't think about every deck list this morning or every matchup this morning, but I did think, how am I gonna board against Just Kai Control? And I was like, I want, a, I want clean boarding against Just Kai Control. So that's the plan. Cut the birds, cut the paths, bring in, bring in some stoof, some stoof and things, stoof and things. One thing I'd like to comment on that I'm doing here is that Eidolon of Rhetoric is not a card that I board in when I'm playing the Sahili combo decks against Jeskai, but the fact that this deck has Court of Calling and Restoration Angel in it means that Eidolon of Rhetoric is better in this matchup because its drawback is less bad for us. I'm gonna fetch shock a temple garden here, sacred. I'm gonna fetch shop sacred foundry because if we draw goblin chain whirler next turn, I want to be able to cast it. Pride Mage is okay because it attacks as a Watch Wolf. Also, they randomly have Search for His Kanta and Detention Spears and Rune Halos. I think in a deck like this, you should never cut all of your artifact and enchantment hate unless you literally are looking at your opponent's deck list and know for sure you won't need it. Uncastable Angels now. This is our, this is our triple, I felt like our triple green, triple red deck needed a triple white card, so we added Archangel of Tithes into the mix. For those, for those that are new, those that really haven't been here before, I felt like, felt like getting a triple, triple white card into the mix was just good deck building. I assume this isn't resolving, but since I only have one land, I just want to take a chance. Take a chance on me. Take a chance on me. Do, 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 do. I did tweet. I did tweet Windboard Muse instead of Archangel of Tides. After some discussion with Burgle, I settled on Archangel. Is this deck competitive? That depends on what you mean by the word competitive. 
Can you win games of modern with it? Almost certainly. Could you top eight a major tournament with it if you ran well and played well? Definitely. Is it tier one? Certainly not. Play my three four for four. For those of you that are at home wondering why Linvala is in against Just Sky Control, it is because it's a threat that attacks for three that doesn't die to Lightning Bolt or Lightning Helix. I don't really play many tournaments, so no, not really. Is this Mama Elspeth? Big Mama Elspeth. Remember when I decided not to show them that I had reached in my deck? Mmm. Mmm. It feels good for them to not know that I have reached in my deck. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Give it to her. Yeah. Give her the helix. Give her the helix. All right. Opponent. Opponent came to grind. You can't outgrind the Candyman opponent. Should have known. Birds of Paradise is fixing. Also, Modern's a format that's about being mana efficient a lot of the time. So being mana efficient with Birds of Paradise is valuable. Modern's a format where decks, especially like Kiki Court and mid-range decks, die with cards in their hand. So Sweeper, sure. When we talked about World Spine Worm last time. See, I, see, I, I know I'm right. I don't need you to tell me what you think because I understand the Magic Tournament rules and I verified it with multiple high-level judges. So you are incorrect and the way that it's supposed to wear off during the end step doesn't work correctly on Magic Online. So, well, if you, if you spoke to a judge about that, they, they told, they were, they were misinformed. They did not understand the rules of the game that they read. Uh, the interaction between Angel's Grace and discarding World Spine Worm during your cleanup step to kill them with Borborygmos before their next turn starts doesn't currently work on Magic Online, which doesn't really surprise me. It's a really convoluted, convoluted thing. Am I... All right, I'm just going to attack for five here, and I think I'm going to end step cord for a voice, probably. I probably want to end step cord for a voice. A Willy Wonka Candyman stream. Yeah, you should die during the cleanup step, because the cleanup step is when, when those effects wear off. Do I just get Selfless Spirit here? I think I just get Selfless Spirit here, right? I guess if I got voice, I could have fired up Raging Ravine. I think I'm gonna start by playing Forge Tender here. I don't, I don't think I've ever said give it to her on stream. And taste it could refer to a variety of things. I don't, I don't, I don't think that's explicitly a penis reference. Also like, also like if you want to talk about sensitivity, like implying that only women could be offended by a penis reference is also kind of like narrow-minded, right? I could cord for Scooze. I don't think, 
Oh, you know what? I should have courted for Eidolon, right? We were talking about penis references in chat, and I... Yeah, so I think I'm actually going to cord for Chain Whirler here, right? Just, like, clean their board out. Oh, Elspeth is literally female. Give her the lightning helix. Elspeth is literally female. Li literally depicts a female character, chat. Literally depicts a female character. This is bad against Wrath. I think I think I messed up and I should have courted for I should have courted for Eidolon in response to the Snapcaster trigger is what should have happened here. Because if they have another sweeper, I'm gonna be kind of kind of in a bad spot. So if they have Snapcaster for Verdict or another Verdict or a Wrath, I'm gonna be in a really bad place. I didn't stack the spirit for the same reason I didn't cord for Eidolon. I'm bickering with chat. The reason why I didn't make the play that makes no sense not to make is because I missed it, because there's a lot going on. No, actually, I did stack the spirit. I didn't forget it. You just didn't see it. Um... And that one's literally on the gatherer page. Uh, you need to refresh your browser page and manually send. So I have a lot of, I have a lot of choices here. I have a lot of choices here. I think I'm supposed to... I can't really play around Settle the Wreckage. Yeah, I think I'm supposed to attack first because depending on how the removal plays out, I might need to Eternal Witness Lightning Helix to finish the Tefri. So I'm going to attack them with Forge Tender and this, and I'm going to attack Tefri with these two. Apprentice with the $10 donation. I saw a giant dino brawl deck in the queue, so I want to see it happen. Sounds good. We'll get to brawl. Maybe we'll do some. Maybe we'll play brawl tomorrow. So I assume this is going to go trade with Forge Tender, Chump Chain Whirler. Oh, they have to pay mana. That's sweet. All right, so then we get to go ahead and Eternal Witness back this Lightning Helix and Helix their Tefri. It'd be really nice if they were at eight if I hadn't messed up and not sacked the Spirit. No, we don't have any room to play around Snare. We just have to take the thing off the table. If they attack us here, that's really bad. All right, we're getting swept. I guess I have like Pride Mage and Voice to reassemble here. The mana base is on your screen. If you're on mobile, you can type exclamation point deck in chat to get a link to a deck list. Okay, so that actually tells us a lot, right? That means they're not going to... I was going to talk about potentially playing around Settle the Wreckage next turn, but that should mean they're not settling us, right?
Uh, bits or direct donations, Tefri. Oh, you think they have snaps secure? Let's let's start with this and see what they do. Let's start with this and make them make a decision. Why did they blow up the EE? Sure. Uh, they're dead to this ravine, right? Yeah, they're at 10. They're exactly dead to the ravine. So they should be three lower, but it looks like we've got them for exactsies here. Threw him a punt. All right. All right. Sweet. 1-0. Four, four matches away from making Matthew let me play this deck this weekend. While we're waiting for the second match to pop, I'd just like to say good morning, afternoon, and good night to everybody, wherever you're at in the world. Thanks for joining me here today. My name is Jeff Holgood. I'm a full-time streamer and content producer here on Twitch. I stream Magic 30-plus hours a week. If you're enjoying my stuff, please consider subscribing to my channel. My very wonderful subscribers are the reason why I am able to stream full-time like I do. You can also support my stuff by supporting some of my wonderful sponsors. MTGOTraders.com will have to buy and sell Magic Online cards with you. If you use code Hogan PayPal, check with them, you'll save 8% on your singles orders there. CoolStuffInc.com buys and sells a lot of cool stuff, including TCG singles. Using promo code Jeff5, you can save 5% on Magic, Pokemon, and Yu-Gi-Oh cards with them. InkGaming.com would love to help you customize your gaming experience using code Jeff12. You can save 12% on custom playmats, mouse pads, binders, and bags there. And of course, myself and everyone would like to welcome you to Hoaglandia. Please talk to your friendly neighbor moderator about your complimentary timeout. Um, this is actually my deck list. So a variation of Kiki Cord got second at a regionals this weekend. And I was looking at the choices that it had made. And I was like, Goblin Chain Whirler is really sweet in this deck. We used to have to splash for cards like Pontiff or is it Static Caster? And this gives us like an okay body that gives us a very similar effect like that. So this is my configuration of Kiki Korn after looking at a deck that finished in the finals of regionals and then um, and then putting some thought into it. I don't know. I don't know if it's good, but it made the finals of a regional tournament. Eh, I should probably mulligan this, but YOLO. YOLO. We had some questions in there. Fleck Mister, if you linked me your deck list on a site like Tapped Out or um, Goldfish, where you log in, you can make updates to your deck list. If you'd like to change the archetype altogether, you can send me a whisper and maybe we can work something out, assuming what you want to change it to is something that I'm willing to play. My, I don't know, like, like whispering, like whispering, like, is ASMR is like, hello chat, my name is Jeff Hoagland. I'm here to talk very softly. Like that, that's what ASMR is, right? Perfect, Jeffrey. Can you can you ping me again on Twitter to remind me that you sent in bits? It's close. <laughs> well, that was creepy. <laughs> uh, no volume and directly. That was that was like the equivalent of no volume for me, right? Like. Normally I have a lot of, a, a, normally I have a lot of volume. <laughs> it's anxiety inducing. Thought sees into lot less troll. Is there a minimum donation for vintage? I don't have a minimum amount for vintage but it does have to get to the top of the queue so 50 ish points to be played and my i don't think i plan to play more than say two vintage decks a week probably only about one i don't want to overload on it because i feel like the reason why the vintage content i've done so far is successful is because it's it's novel and neat and different but i think if we overload on it it'll kind of wear it wear itself out Yes, AMSR Jeff is my volume set to one. Uh, this is game one. We won the first match against Jeskai. Could be a weird soul flare deck, yep. My one lander is not panning out. My one lander is not panning out.
Lantern Leagues are 1,000 USD. One, 1,000 USD and not a penny less. Okay, okay. I like lantern gate to time out. It needs to be one, one, one bulk donation. For people asking, can they make multiple or not? It needs to be one, one large donation all together. All together now, all together now, all together now, all together now. Be to do to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and attack for three again here in the air. We'll path this Lotleth troll next turn. Of course, Tefri. Can we lay away Lantern? Some, some people like throwing their money away. With you whispering like Bob Ross and paint. Christy and I actually did an arts and crafts stream one time. I think it's on her YouTube channel. We definitely we didn't put it up on mine, but I think we put it on hers. For the first deck, I day two to GP with Bant Spirits, Nicholas Bolas, thank you, will do. Thank you for the support as always. For those of you that are new to the channel, I'm gonna plug, I should plug my donation deck list more. Do I need to plug the donation deck to throw money at Tinfin Depths? Anonomic, thank you very much, we'll get that one pushed up. So people that are, if you're new, the people that are cheering and specifying various deck lists, all, almost all the deck lists we play on this stream are viewer driven deck lists. So people send in deck lists if they're interested in seeing me play. And then the order in which we play those decks is either a wait in, the, in this queue that I have that's a spreadsheet for time or people that donate or cheer bits, they get to push decks up that queue so we play them sooner rather than later. Oh, oh, this is gonna bring their blood gas into play. I guess that's kind of relevant, huh? I mean, the the stream title is kind of that, right, Foxkilla? The the stream title is kind of that reference. Shannon with the ten dollar donation, bump the Bob Ross stream up. <laughs> is courting for whirler even good here the fact that land doesn't make red mana kind of sucks story of my geeky cord life i guess i just i just play tireless tracker here and then i play a land and then next turn i can go Selfless spirit block here double block here sack selfless spirit and then take two kill this kill this
So for people that don't understand the chat rules here, one, there's a link to them when you when you click in. You can type exclamation point rules in chat to get a link to refresh your memory. My goal while streaming magic here is to keep the chat on topic and relevant and at least semi-focused, which is hard when there's a lot of people. So I, I reserve the right to time out or even ban people that are posting things that are off topic, especially if they are blatantly incorrect. Especially if they are blatantly incorrect. So we're gonna take two here. The Gurmag is gonna die. Next turn we can cord for Chain Whirler potentially. Clean their, clean their blood gas out. And then once we were for Chain Whirler, we're just gonna close the door very quickly, right? Like they're at 10 and these things don't block. I want a game day with that card. Legacy staple Goblin Chain Whirler here. Trigger. Razor Verge Thicket, Temple Garden, Basic Forest, Cord for Triple Red Card, go. Nothing has ever embodied Kiki Cord more than this moment. This, this moment truly embodies Kiki Cord at its finest. Just... Three lands that don't make red mana cord for triple red card. Your move, Yugi boy. We're we're actually playing uncastable goblin tribal right now for those that are at home. And uh they're actually dead on board, right? We cracked this clue and then we hit them for we hit them for nine. Of course it's got first strike. It wouldn't, couldn't be a legacy staple if it didn't have first strike, chat. You think this is? You think this is? So I'm just gonna smash them for lethal here, hopefully. If they have removal and then like untap and draw bolt, we could die, but this is nine and they're at nine, so kill you. All right, what are we doing? Baloth seems great. Scavenging Ooze seems great. Fiery Justice seems fine. Um, Eidolon technically stops Vengevine, but their deck doesn't seem like it's very good at casting two spells. Their game, their deck doesn't seem very good at casting two spells in a turn. Uh, I think Sahali's probably a little bit slow. I think Quasily Pride Mage probably isn't needed. We just trim a Cordify. I'm, am I supposed to trim a Candyman? Am I am I supposed to trim the Candyman? I feel like the Candyman might be the. I feel bad for suggesting it. I feel bad for suggesting it, but I feel like cutting the Candyman might be correct here. It's either Cord or a Candyman. Oh, Archangel of Tithes is probably fine. Yeah, I think I'm supposed to maybe even trim one of each. Hey, Night Lives, thank you very much for the Twitch Prime support. Welcome. Maybe it's just two trackers, actually. Just two trackers. We could just cut Freaky Kiki too, and just like plan not to combo them. I don't hate that. Just like cut the cut the big goblin. I actually kind of like that. I feel like we can win on just like the back of scavenging uses and restoration angels most of the time, right? Don't cut my meatball. 
You often cut Kiki against the aggressive decks because he's just like really bad to draw. Cutting Kiki feels like cutting Jace the Mind Sculptor, right? Uh, yeah, this hand seems good. Scavenging is decent here against their graveyard deck. He's a little bit slow on the draw. Uh, Voice of Resurgence blocks pretty well, though, and the token it leaves behind is decent. No Path Exile on this hand is kind of a tilt, but there are Thoughtseize deck as well they showed us last game, so there's a good chance we don't really want to mulligan for that stuff anyways. That's a pretty low bar, but I feel like, yes, Kikijiki is better than Jace the Mind Sculptor. Hey, what is... Moto really wants us to 5-0 this league. They really want us to 5-0 this league. Yeah, I'm cornfield time here in the Midwest. Resolves. What is the best four mana Jason Modern? It's definitely the Mind Sculptor. Uh, if we win this game, we'll be 2-0, and it looks like we're, it looks like we're winning. This deck's kind of a pile that we're playing against now, it looks like, but we did beat Jeskai Control in the first match, Burgle. So it was sweet that we had a plan for that. The real question here is, do I fetch Temple Garden or Stomping Ground with this Arid Mesa? Because there's both Goblin Chain Whirler and Archangel of Tithes in my deck at the moment. That's why they kept their hand. They kept their hand hoping that their Dark Blast would just be the nut. That seems loose, but okay, I accept your premise. I think I'm playing this in passing here. I want to just cord for a scavenging use, I think. There's a problem with Stream Decker. It's only showing me 60. Fun fact. The Kiki Court deck that top aided regionals was actually playing 61. I was an adult and cut it to 60. Scott Aragon with the three month resubscription. I do appreciate that. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Thank you for the quarter of the year. No more donations till then, yada yada. I once registered a 63 card main deck for the inv for an invitational. Hey, Prizio, thank you. Welcome to a live one. Glad you enjoy the YouTube stuff. Welcome. It's gonna. Actually, if they want to dredge Dark Blast, I'm kind of okay with that, right? I think I'm okay. I think I'm okay with them dredging Dark Blast. Smack you go. Yep, yep, 63 cards in the main deck, 12 on the board. The single worst deck I've ever registered for a competitive event. Um, well, I mean, like, that's, that's, that's an easy question, right? It's like 10 out of 10, Ollie Mine. It's not, not even particularly close. So, I think I messed up. I think I should have fetched for Tracker this turn. I'm gonna fetch for a tracker on my turn. Just like have, have mono lands in my hand. Thankfully, the candy man is gonna turn these lands into toys. The can the candy man forgives all. The candy man believes in the candy that he brings. To be, to be fair, you could argue that for a lot of my magic career, I wasn't really trying to be competitive. <laughs> I'm, gi I'm giving Matt updates in our team chat on Facebook. Because <laughs> I told him if I 5-0, I'm going to play Kiki Card this weekend. 
Oh no! Oh no! I don't want to play. Do I? I don't want to play Kiki Cord, right? I don't think I want to do that. The Jund list is linked in the donation queue, and it'll be up on Stream Decker when it's our current deck. Need to concede. Concede. I gotta I got work really hard to throw one of these matches, chat. Getting the getting the sweats here. Contractually obligated. Dear, dear Rossi, if you're out there, I have never wanted you or needed you to press the Tron button more than right now. But please, please Tron me. Please, please Karn me. Come on, Karn Daddy. Come on, Karn Daddy. Don't you dare concede. Practice endlessly with JAC runs back Kiki Cord, right? Who'd have known the secret to making Kiki Cord feel playable? was just putting some good cards in it. Who'd have known? Who'd have known? Yeah, we've got three wet balls and two fulminators. I've got tools for Tron. Big old corn daddy. This is an excellent Hearthstone hand. Unfortunately, this is Magic the Gathering, so we're gonna have to mulligan looking for some lands. That isn't really in the spirit of Kiki Card, right? That's a bingo. Does Hearthstone have mana dorks? It doesn't. It has rampant growth. It doesn't have mana dorks, to my knowledge. At least Hearthstone standard format doesn't. Chat, you will never lose a game because you mulligan to five if you always keep six or more. Just, just for reference. Just to opponents mulligan to five. That means they're either playing Tron or they're playing Bogles or they're very unlucky. Basic Planes? I can beat Basic Planes on a multi five. Let's go! Let's go! Could be Bogles. Could be Bogles. One slippery boy. One slippery boy. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Is that a good pickup chat? How do we, how do we feel about that one? How do we, how do we feel about that one? What are we, where, where are we at on that one? Where are we, where are we at on the Quasily Pride Mage front? There's no spell skite in this deck. Once upon a time, this was a matchup that you just got to dunk when you played Kiki Cord, but the lack of spell skite probably makes it slightly less dunkable. Do I do I play Tireless Tracker here? Or do I guarantee my card draws with it? I think I'm supposed to play Tracker here because that way next turn I can go Pride Mage plus crack a clue. Sometimes they have main deck paths, but I think this is worth the risk. Patrizo, thank you very much for the 500 bits. Thank you for the support, I appreciate it, welcome. So, on the back of this Quasily Pride Mage, if we can keep their first strike enchantments off them, we can actually block Bogles pretty reasonably, which is nice. Well, well. So, we probably want to pull the trigger on the Pride Mage this turn. Yeah, if we blow Rancor, they lose Coronet, but that gives them Rancor back to their hand, which lets them recast it, which is annoying. Which is not, not ideal. This is a free attack, right? Yeah, this is a free attack, because if they block, I eat their thing. We're not 
dead yet? I'm not going to an open this weekend. I think I'm just supposed to kill the Coronet inside of combat. Because I don't want to give them the Rancor back to their hand to cast again. Yep. If you also, if you linked me, run back to Fin Depths. Thank you, Kim Jong. 10 out of 10 will do. Lots of people have been donated to bump that one, so we'll probably be getting to that one sooner rather than later. I think we're dead, chat. Feeling pretty dead. Feeling pretty dead. Yeah, the first, first strike enchantments are beating. We, we flew too close to the sun, Spam. We flew, we flew too close to the sun. I think I'm actually supposed to kill the Ethereal Armor here just because it gives more attack and defense. Yeah, this board doesn't have much for Vogels either. We've got one EE, one Sage. Maybe. There's a non-zero chance that they, like, didn't have enough one-mana things. No, Damping Sphere is not worth boarding in. This specific situation doesn't come up too often. I'm like, we have eight pieces of removal in our deck for Core Spirit Dancer. So, like, we just didn't really have spells this game. Couple of mostly irrelevant spells. This isn't very good. This isn't very good. I guess that's all I'm doing, really. Our goal is to, like, set up a couple of blockers and then, like, be able to set up the combo with Court of Calling. No, I think on average the Archangel is not going to be very relevant. No, you need you have to kill. The reason why they were able to do what they did that game was because they had they had Core Spirit Dancer. I think being able to kill Core Spirit Dancer is very important. I think hoping to fulminator them is worse than just having more copies of two two mana creatures in my deck, even though they're not very good because playing two mana creatures out faster allows us to cast cord quicker. We are 2-0 in this league and we are down a game to Bogles. Yeah, this is definitely a matchup where Magus of the Moat is definitely better than Archangel of Tithes. I think Tithes is better on average, but this is definitely a matchup where Magus of the Moat is very good. That's true. That's true. And I, I know I kept a five lander this game, but like, you know, that's true. Magus of the Moat would not be doing a lot at the moment. Get that auto yield value. Five pe five candy piece hand. Ugh. Maybe we can da dodge daybreak coronet, he thinks to himself as he slowly slides down into his chair. <sighs> Whew. 
Glad we drew a piece of removal can kill their creature finally. It's good for us. All right, excellent. All right. We're registering just case and it sees this weekend. God bless. God bless us, everyone. The classic BM play the other. Oh, I could have blocked with the bird, right? The reason why I didn't block with the bird is I didn't think about it. Probably doesn't matter ultimately, but I definitely could have had another turn there by blocking with the bird. Look at all these good cards we were going to draw. I think it's modern and nothing is very popular right now. I think it's a very Twitch chatty, very Twitch chatty thing to say. Where's my, where's my data? I'm going to share. All right. I need, you need to promise not to tell the Watsi data police, but I'm going to show you my super secret data that says Bogles is only 3.58% of the top finishes. And then you can look at the data from regionals and see that it wasn't many of the top finishes there either. So I think I think nothing is particularly popular in modern ever at any given point. I think boarding narrow cards for something like Bogles is kind of silly. If you know that there's gonna be a lot of Bogles in your local metagame, sure, play a spell skite in your main deck. That's a pretty low cost of ownership, but I think overall it's not very good. No, I don't keep track of what decks I play against an MTGO. There's no point. I don't I don't care. I'm not gonna do anything with the data. No one man should have all that data. Call call the watch your data police! Get them! Get them! Hog Hoglands trying to make data-based arguments! I think Celestial Flare is incredibly narrow and bad card. I think if you want an effect like that, you should play Blessed Alliance. You're ruining magic. I agree. No, I think that's I think that's a pretty objective fact. I I don't think I've ever talked like hexproof is like the Amon Kep border of magic mechanics. The only person that thinks it could have possibly ever been a good idea is the idiot designer that made it. Hexproof. Hexproof is a garbage tier mechanic and the designer that made it, hopefully they were never allowed to create another magic card. Ojitai is a great example of a card that has Hexproof done in an elegant way. So something Eternal card game does really, really well is I love their, I love their, um, what they have, uh, Eternal card game does their, their hex proof mechanic really nicely. So an Eternal card game, it works kind of like Kira in that the first time you target a thing, it, it gets countered, but the second time you target it, it dies and their, their Aegis mechanic applies to applies to sweeper effects too so like if you go to like wrath of god one of their cards that has this agus mechanic the wrath of god doesn't doesn't kill it which is sweet because like as a control player it gives you a way to interact with these cards better than you can with hexproof and as an aggro player it gives you a way to like actually have protected cards i have no idea All right, hopefully we don't die next turn. Yeah, Hexproof in Hearthstone is also much more balanced too because you can just attack it directly. 
You are not wrong. Not incorrect. It's another thing Hearthstone does that's very good compared to magic. Um, this deck is a clunky mid-range mess. Is is exactly the clunky mid-range mess that I remember and love. It's not it's not particularly good, but it's playing a lot of sweet cards. Well, we can kill them in like two turns here, but I think that's gonna be much too slow. Bogles into Infect. At Hogland, he misbuilt his deck, didn't put Spellskite in. Got beat by Bogles and Infect. Serves him right. Serves him right. Oh, geez. Cord, Cord would be insane here, huh? How good would Cord of Calling be? It's like the actual Stone Nuts. I guess I should have fetched a red source here so we could draw the goblin. Because, like, if I actually draw the goblin, we can't cast him, believe it or not. We don't play cards like that, Jap. We don't play removal. We don't, we don't play removal. Historically speaking, this matchup's okay for Kiki Court, especially if you have a like, Pontiff-style effect in your deck. But the fact that we don't have a Spell Skite hurts us a lot. Spell Skite's very good in this matchup. What what else is in that list, Tempest? So like Bogles and Infect, you say the list is sizable. Can you expand on the list? Like what what else is in that list? Can you explain to me what other matchups that you feel it's good in? Dead to any plus four pump spell here. So I'm pr I'm pretty sure like that's the list, right? Fine against burn is okay. We're two and one. We died to Bogles. The Gorio's S4 troll deck is really clunky and unfocused in my experience. Huh. Well, that just happened. Just saying there's a chance. All right, I'll take it. I'll take it. I will take the shit out of a chance. Take a chance on me. Take a chance on me. Little that's that's ABBA, right? Pretty sure that's ABBA. I know a lot of my classics. I think we're I think we're ahead now, right? I didn't attack with the tracker because I wanted to leave back three blockers. Some Africa by Toto. Get a ukulele. Yep, Eternal Card Games Mulligan System is is rancid, lazy, and terrible. 
Sorry, is that too harsh? I should be harsher. It's <laughs> their, their mulligan system and their best of one ladder are just ruined the game for me. I just can't get into it. So Holly does turn off spell sky. That is definitely true. My ringtone is Jeff explaining Hex's starting hand algorithm. A dollar for the chorus of Africa. I, I am gonna disappoint some people here and let you know that I don't know what the song Africa is by name. I, I probably have heard it if it's a classic. If you're describing it as a classic, I've almost certainly heard it at some point, but I don't know the lyrics by name. I'm like 90% sure I'm gonna click this link and it's not gonna play music on my stream. Yeah, that, that is a classic. All right, yep, 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 yep. All right. Can hear the drum. And that and that ladies and gentlemen, if you understand how technology works, is how easy it is for when whenever you hear a streamer use the cop out that they just want to listen to music and that's why they steal music for their stream. You can play music on your stream with you can listen to music in your headphones without your audience hearing it. All right, I'm going to confirm a voice of resurgence here. I think that's it. I don't think I want any of the other stuff up here. Rex Sage actually probably isn't worth it. I'm going to leave this other voice in. Are you singing? How, how do you do it? So on a real operation, system that has a sound subsystem in my output devices here in pulse audio you can create what's called a loopback device so only things i manually pipe into this web stream channel get played on my obs on consumer operating systems like windows i don't know how to do that offhand but on on an operating system that has a real sound sound subsystem that gives you gives you good control it's it's beautiful it's beautiful and fantastic at this path to exile. We're just gonna path this, right? I guess I can block it with selfless spirit. I, think I wanna path this. I think I wanna path this. If I subscribe, would you sing the circle of life? I'll give you like a belt out of the chorus that everybody knows. They usually don't have a basic, they usually don't have a basic island. Samian, the circle of life. Do, 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 do. The circle, it's the circle of life. Nah, we fucked it up at the end there. We got, we got a little bit at the beginning. Got a little bit at the beginning. A little bit at the beginning. All right, I'm gonna grab a temple guard. I'm gonna grab a sacred foundry here. The final countdown. Do 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 You're welcome, everyone. Oh, look at that. They only play one basic land in their deck. Ugh, get fucked. Get him. Got him good. 
That was if I if I'd have known for sure they only played one basic, the path was definitely great. Is this seeing more Eminem? The problem with singing Eminem on stream is that it's like marginally and obviously offensive to many people. Could be listening to music on my road trip. Well, now you get a little bit of both. You get some you get some music on your road trip and you get some Hogland. Lose yourself in the music the moment you will. Bet you never, ever let it go. Only get one shot tonight. It's your chance to roll. This opportunity comes once in a lifetime. All right, so we're going to chord for Fulminator Mage. Look, I, I know I look like I'm 40 by and large, but I am, I am very much only in my late 20s. I listened to a lot of Eminem growing up. Listened to a lot of Eminem growing up. And a lot of country music. God, my parents listened to a lot of fucking country music. Might have to be at the stream. Hi, kids. Do you like violence? Do you want to see me stick nine inch nails through each one of my eyelids? Do exactly like I did and get worse than my life is? Oh, they have two basics. Just the other one was in their hand. That makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. A little, a little paramour. My wife and I actually had, um, a paramour, paramour for the first dance song at our wedding. Uh, was it where the lines overlap? I think it was where the lines overlap. I should probably know the answer. That. I hope Christy's not listening at work right now because I should probably know the answer to like what song that was. I'm, I'm like 90% sure it was where the lines overlap. When am I going to get a price point on that album? Painting, we need a painting and singing stream. Uh, I mean, someone doesn't have to be nice in order for me to, in order for me to like appreciate what they do. Christy's actually older than I am. And I, I had hair when we started dating, so I didn't always look old and bitter and jaded. Christy and I, Christy and I started dating a decade ago. I've showed this picture on stream before, but I used, I used to have hair. I used to, I used to have hair. And then I had kids and I got older. Look at this dude. He's a, isn't that a douchebag? Man, look at that. He's a douchebag. I'm still a douchebag. I just look slightly less like it now. All right, so let's go ahead and pass here. Let's go ahead and path this. I like you better without hair. I'll never unsee that. I'll never see it coming. Got him. Got him. Good news. If we don't die next turn, we're, they're very dead on our next turn. Sweet. The snarky math t-shirt definitely completes the picture. You're not wrong. The, the classic XKCD t-shirt. While we're waiting for the fifth and final match of the league to pop, I'd just like to thank everyone for hanging out here today while we're, we're parodying bad pop and rock classic songs. My name is Jeff Hoagland. We're playing some Magic 2. I stream full-time here on Twitch. I stream Magic 30-plus hours a week. We play a ton of modern. We play some legacy. We play we play some vintage. I also stream Hex and Hearthstone on occasion. If you're enjoying my content and you want to help keep me keep me here doing what I do, please consider subscribing to my channel. My subscribers are the reason that I'm able to do what I do as often as I do it. If you're unfamiliar with subscribing on Twitch, subscriptions start at $4.99 a month. Or if you're one of the many people in the world who has Amazon Prime, 
If you link that to your Twitch account, that gives you Twitch Prime included for free with that. And it gives you a free channel subscription to a channel of your choice every single month. It doesn't cost you anything extra if you have Amazon Prime. Chainer DM with the 200 bits. I'm here for the songs. In addition to subscribing to my channel, and sharing with bits like Chainer DM there. You can also support myself by checking out some of my wonderful sponsors. Cards3.com would love to help you turn some of your cards into other cards or cash directly with other people. There's no haggling, they just take 1% fee off the top. It's Ardeon. Thank you very much for the Twitch Prime support. There's a lot of great people making a lot of great stuff on Twitch right now. Thanks for supporting mine this month. Mac Weldon, they provide premium men's clothing. Using code Jeff Hoagland at bit.ly forward slash Hugo Clothes, you can save 20% on your first order of polos, t-shirts, underwear, socks, all sorts of great stuff there. And of course, this stream wouldn't be possible without viewers like Anironix, Justin, Nivik, and all of y'all out there. Thanks for watching, folks. We're three and one. We're heading on into the fifth match here in this league with Kiki Cord. What do I think of MS acquiring GitHub? I think I have all of my repositories that are on GitHub backed up on local systems. And if it looks like Microsoft is going to fuck shit up, then we'll move to something like GitLab or Bitbucket or one of the many other free alternatives. No, no, we didn't 5-0. I like the Just Guy Ascendancy deck. I think the Just Guy Ascendancy deck is very good. I'm going to play that on Saturday. I'm not allowed to keep this, right? Maybe if, like, this was a Candyman or this was a Candyman, I could keep this. But I'm pretty sure we're supposed to play Catch and Release with that. It's, it's tough to mulligan turn one birds. Because, like, you don't register Birds of Paradise to mulligan turn one birds. Hopefully there's some kind of bad blue-white control deck. I think Kiki Cord's actually pretty good against most of the blue-white control variants. Especially with three trackers in the main. What if Jun Tracker kicks ass? Nah, probably not. I really like how the JAC deck plays. I really don't want to play something that's completely fair on Saturday. Playing fair decks is kind of medium. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quasi pride mage the shit out of this. Out of this search for Azkanta. I could take this opportunity to, like, guaranteed resolve my voice, but I think just, like, shooting their toy down is worthwhile. If I donate a sub, do I get any sort of deck bump? Sure. If you if you donate a sub to someone, you can bump a deck five points on the queue. That, that seems fair. You spent $5 towards my stuff, you can bump a deck five points. That's an open offer to anyone. If you gift a sub to someone that you'd like to gift a sub to, you can bump a deck five points in the queue. As a heads up, tier tier two subs also get to bump a deck on the queue, and tier three subs get to add a deck or bump a deck by a lot in the queue. So we're up to th cord for three here so far. I guess if I draw a fetch lane, we'll just like cord for the candy man. Have you thought about the watch points at all? I don't know what the, I don't know what that means, Mr. Mr. Layton. Mr. Uh, Layton, sorry. So, Mardu Pyromancer in my experience is generally worse against against combo decks and decks like Tron because it's Pyromancer is worse at applying pressure than Tarmogoyf decks are by and large. So, I I actually did some research into the points for giving people points for watching the stream, and I think there's a there's a website that gives you lots of data on like people that watch your stuff, and I think there is so there's so many viewer hours on my channel at this point that. I already kind of have a hard time keeping up with the donation decks as is because we have so many of them because y'all are wonderful and send me lots of stuff. Um, I think I would probably either have to give, I would either have to give so few points to free points in the queue to make it reasonable that like people just wouldn't even be interested in doing it or I would give out so many that I would end up drowning in donation points. So like my goal is to keep it so all the decks in the queue are always under 50 points ideally so that way if someone wants to donate a, donate $50 they immediately get to go to the top of the queue 
I want to talk about my sequencing there for a second. You'll notice I played the Restoration Angel on my turn. And the reason why I did that, even though Restoration Angel has Flash, is because getting Restoration Angel into play around a counterspell there was very valuable, in my opinion. Stamp it, gift in the subs. Yeah, yeah, I think I think even if it would ju was just bumping, it would get too many decks above that 50 point threshold. And I wouldn't, I just wouldn't be able to keep up with what I want to keep up with. Yep, that's fine. Possibility Storm, 10 out of 10 will do. Thank you for gifting the sub, stamp it. Nope, that's that's fine, Captain Command. And in, in the future, you can simply upload your deck list to a website like Tapped Out or Goldfish, and then you're able to update the deck list as you make changes between now and when I play it eventually. Emo Robot Gaming with the brand new tier one sub. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Welcome. No, we're three and one in this league. No, I don't really care about killing the Jace. I'm going to cord for a voice of resurgence here and then just try and kill them next turn. And I do really appreciate the subscriptions. Those are those are those are 100% the reason why I'm able to treat this like a job. For the reason why they're no longer screaming children running around me here while we play Magic the Gathering. The fact that we have six points of reach here could almost, is hopefully going to catch them by surprise. So hopefully this is going to be like six upstairs kill you. The fact that none of these are going at J should be a huge red flag for them. I watch you on YouTube all the time as a dad of two toddlers just getting into the stream. The game in your rocks are well. Thank you. Thank you for the support, emo robot. I do appreciate it. Okay, so they gave us a token here but they're not going to be dead to our burn spells at this point, which is a little bit sad, but we do get to kill the Jace and we still have plenty of pressure in play. I'm going to spend the Helix to kill the Jace here because I, not only do I want to gain the health total, but I want to be mana efficient this turn. So did you, were you a tier two sub Mertz gets in? So the base subs don't get any bonuses included with them. That just allows them to put decks into the queue. So Stamp It was gifting subs to folks. Well, that is a huge bag of ducks. That is definitely how we lose this game. I was like, well, if we have... If they sweep, we have voice and selfless spirit. I think that's just the game. I think that's just the game. Now, nah, there's no reason to bolt aggressively here. They could have another Planeswalker that I need to kill with it later. I'm holding this land in my hand in case we draw Tireless Tracker. Get, get back quarter calling here. The, the gifting subs to bump things only applies if you're already subscribed to the channel. So Dogwood Crow, they the direct damage gem is banned in Immortal. So the classic three shard shaman's deck that we played back in the old standard isn't playable in Immortal because Immortal doesn't have that direct damage gem that made it very playable. So my comment about My comment about, no, because the, I don't think it's ever correct to do that, no. I think rushing to combo kill in these control matchups is a mistake that a lot of inexperienced players make. Your opponent is very likely to have Path to Exile or Counterspell or some piece of spot removal. For those that are wondering the details on how subscriptions and donation decks work, all the details are here. All the details are here, so... Poke that out. I'll add, I'll add a note there about gifting subs to other people if you're already a sub later. That's the only thing that's different. 
I, I guess I'm just boarding like I did against just Sky Ray. It's like all eight of these out. I guess I don't want this Forge Tender in this particular matchup, but Reclamation Sage is usually better against Blue White. Because they tend to have more, more artifacts than enchantments. It's feeling, feeling like we're sliding towards a 3-2 here. Has the Bant Kiki deck jumped the shark? All, all of these creature combo decks are just really clunky and slow in, tumo, in modern Tumos. I'm really not a, a huge fan of any of them, if I'm being honest. Like, they're fun to play, but like, when I say not a fan, I mean from purely from a competitive perspective. It, it's not like just Kai Ascendancy, where like, I enjoy playing it, and it feels very competitive, and I think it's a reasonable deck to take to a tournament. And like, obviously, an iteration of this just got second at a regional, so like, Modern's a format where you can play anything and do well with anything, but by and large, I feel like these decks are really kind of awkward. Do we think Fiery Justice is good? Seems a little awkward. Is it better than like a Bolt or a Helix? I don't think so. I think I'm happy with all the cards we have. This hand's very good. We can actually, we can actually cast Archangel of Ties on Curve? What is this nonsense? Yay, more voices. Yeah, the fact the fact that they're on the four terminus version makes this matchup a lot worse for us. We have tools to play around Supreme Verdicts and Anger of the Gods. We do not have tools to play around a terminus. I think we're probably just gonna go voice fetch land on on three and then tracker play fetch crack fetch on four. Jeskai Control, Mardu Pyromancer, Jund, Green Black Midrange. These are all very reasonably and powerful interactive midrange and control decks in modern. And then I think once I play this tracker, I'm not playing any more creatures out until they clear our board or interact with some of our threats. Don't detentions fear me. I don't think this archetype has tools to deal with Terminus. The only really real thing you... I, I guess you could splash for Vendillion Click and Counter Spells, but that's really all you can do. Because you can click them in response to the Miracle Trigger. No, you don't want to play God Teague in your Quarter Calling deck. You just... You really don't. I'd rather just give up the matchup. Spell spell queller spell queller terminus is not going to work out how you want it to work out. It's, it's going to be it's going to be bad news bears for you. The blue splash is slightly less bad because you have a lot of cards that play at instant speed anyways, but I still don't think it's particularly good. They have a Jace here. I could like Jace unsummon us and bury us pretty far in the ground. Maybe an upkeep path here. Draw step path. Hey Velvo, glad you're enjoying it. Thanks for dropping by today. Silence can play around Terminus, you're not wrong. 
You're not wrong that Silence can definitely play around turn to miss. Dealer's choice. Hopefully they click us into a land, and then we get to play Tireless Tracker and make two clues. Oh, they do have to take the Pride Mage, don't they? Yeah, that's pretty good for us. Mage of Zelfer is good. Hey, you are technically correct. You are technically correct. That is definitely good against Terminus. Click's just a good magic card. It's disruption and it's a very efficient clock. It's evasive. I don't think I'm willing to trade the Candyman for the click here, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pass. Pride Mage has never been bad. It's just like a passable attacker that gives you utility. If you're playing a Court of Calling deck, you should have a way to destroy artifacts or enchantments in your 75. Hmm, that's fair. So I missed, I missed three points of damage. Because if they blocked, I just double crack my clues and then eat them. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good line. I think I'm supposed to crack this. Why why is Eidolon good here? I need a card that actually kills them, I think. So you put some some amount of power into play. I think this game has gotten to the point or it's one of those games where we're technically not dead here, but we're not winning this game, right? Like this is, this is a board state we're really not coming back from. All right, they're letting us untap with Pio, which is nice here. So I'm gonna send this at Jace and send these at them. And if they settle us here, I really don't care about that, I don't think. It's 
interesting that they let me kill Jace with this as opposed to pathing this on their turn. Shoot the clue? No way. Drawing a card is very valuable. I'm already down two trackers, so I'm just gonna put this into play tapped. It's possible that playing this now is wrong just because I don't have any instant speed cards in my hand currently. No, we're three and one and we're down a game in this match. Petrizo, thank you very much for the brand new sub there. For people asking why I didn't play the Fulminator Mage, they can choose not to flip as Kanta chat. Flipping as Kanta is optional. So if I play the Fulminator Mage out proactively, my opponent's just not going to flip it until they take the Fulminator Mage off the table. So you want to let them flip their thing and then play your card that destroys it. I guess let's start by... No, nah, I'm going to play around Mana Leaks and stuff. Let's do this. And then we each only get one spell a turn, so I'm going to play this now, and then during their upkeep, we'll bolt the Tefri. I'm, I'm, I'm aware of the Eidolon. I understand what my cards do. I played, I played the card understanding what my cards do. I would recommend opening up MTG Goldfish and looking at the decks that are top finishes and then looking at the prices. <laughs> oh, Pikes. This looks like a big logic not here to let them keep their ass canta. Yep. I don't want biting us a little bit here. Yeah, I think playing Idol on two turns ago is probably wrong. I probably should have shocked and played like Sahali back out. Right, that worked out better than expected. Yeah, I think the fact that I didn't have any cords or restoration angels in my hand meant I should have waited to play the idol on. I have another Tefri. Bomb it. I think our, our own idol on is gonna like tempo us out of the game basically. Resto's a good draw. What do we got, opponent? Who paths exile? I think that's actually kind of okay for us. Is it? Yeah, I think so. So I've got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, which is awkward considering I have two and four mana things. So I guess I'm gonna play, I'm gonna play Archangel of Tithes out here actually.
It's just, it is a 3-4 flyer for 4. Is a, we are playing Archangel of Titus this matchup because it is a 3-4 flyer for 4. I am aware of what the text box on my Restoration Angel is. I would believe you if you said ch most of chat didn't know what Restoration Angel's chat, bo chat box is, but I, I have cast many a Restoration Angel. Eidolon does see spells cast before it in a turn. So, just for reference, it, do, it does in fact see spells cast before it in a turn. It knows the total number of spells cast in, in the current turn. Hey, Patrizo. Thank you for the sub, I appreciate it. Have a have a good day. It's a hardcast terminus here. Smells like hardcast terminus, yep. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So like oftentimes in this deck, a line is like you'll cord for Eidolon in response to your opponent's um, in response to your opponent's Snapcaster Mage trigger targeting the spell in the graveyard because the Eidolon sees that they've cast the Snapcaster and then they can't flash back their spell. Not beating tough for an Ascanta from there. All right, that was good. That was good. I feel like we didn't play a game three in that entire league. That was, it was still an hour and 40 minutes. Good gosh, good gosh. Uh, Kiki Cord. Um, yep, it's the same hot clunky mess that I remember and love. Um, if you're looking to play Kiki Cord, this build felt okay. I like the high land count. I like the trackers. Um, honestly, this Corsair might be better as a fourth tracker if you were going to play this. The details seem fine. All right, let's try. Let's try something else, shall we? We're going to wrap up the day with.